G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I thought I'd share a extension for Dynamo that I found recently um, that improves how you can graphically show your scripts uh, by giving them some color. So we're going to add some color to our nodes. Um, so you might be aware of node groups, um, which are a feature in Dynamo by default. So the way a node group works is you just basically get a set of nodes. I'll just ungroup these. So you select them together, right click, create group, and you can give the group a title by double clicking and typing. And you can also change its color from a palette that it's predetermined. <clears throat> you can also change the font size of the title as well, if you so choose, depending on how important the section of the script is maybe. Uh, but today we're gonna be looking at a custom package, which is technically a Dynamo extension um, by this man here who works at Zaha did in London. And the package is called Iris. Uh, it basically gives you a color wheel which lets you recolorize uh, all aspects of node blocks. Um, so you can really change how people view your scripts and also how they follow data through your script as well because you notice it also changes wire colors as well. So um, we're using Dynamo 2.0.3 in this demonstration of it, um, but I believe it should also work in most versions of 2 as well. Um, and we won't really build a script today. It's really just to show you how it works and how you might be able to take advantage of it uh, in your scripting. Okay, so without further ado, let's actually take a look at the script and how it works. Uh, so if you're looking to install the script, uh, you'll need to go to the package manager and search for Iris. And I recommend just installing the latest version uh, if it works in your version of Dynamo. Um, I'm using 2.0.3, but I'm sure it works in a lot of other versions as well. I think it says Dynamo 2. So as long as it's Dynamo 2, it should be fine. And as he describes it, it makes uh, Dynamo colorful and fun, gives you visual cues. Uh, but if you just click this button here and download it, what will happen is you won't see it in your packages. However, it will be present in your packages if you go to manage packages. So it's basically lurking in the background waiting for you to use the features that it adds to Dynamo. You'll notice here that all my nodes look a little bit different um, from normal. So you'll see here they've, they've become a bit more light and gray and they've added this little triangle in the corner of each node. And that's basically done by Iris the moment that you install it. Um, I think I needed to reboot Dynamo for it to take full effect. So once you've installed Iris, just um, feel free to do that. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just ungroup this and let's just uh, double click on this little triangle and see what happens. There we go, so we get a color wheel. Um, really cool. And you've got the option to copy colors to clipboard, paste colors from clipboard, um, and the number of colors that you want to display. So you've got a few options for how many colors on the wheel you want to be able to pick from. Uh, depending on, I guess, what you're trying to achieve, um, probably, you know, the, le the less is better because it gives you more standardization. Uh, but it's up to you. And we have a lot of options for what we can colorize. So we can colorize our node background. So let's just make that green. Our node text, uh, let's just make that black so you can see all the text within the node. Um, the header text, uh, let's make that uh, make the slightly gray. And let's just make the header background, actually I'll make the header background white and the header text black. And then our border, we'll just make black as well. And already you can see Dynamo looks really different um, using this script, which is great. Um, it gives you a lot more customization and it makes your scripts look a lot nicer and easier to follow as well, because you can use different color palettes for different things. So for example, all your custom nodes, uh, you could replace the graphics of those nodes with a different color and all your users will immediately be able to recognize what a custom node is and whether they might not have it on their computer. So if we okay that, we'll, we'll look at the option of copy colors to clipboard. Okay, looks like that function maybe won't work. Uh, we'll just save, cancel. Okay, yeah, looks like it was gonna crash, but it didn't crash. Um, quite a new package, so you will expect sometimes that there might be some bugs. It seems like it has still pasted it, um, even though it said it was gonna crash. It might have done that because the iris node hasn't wasn't here yet. Um, the first time you use iris in a package, it will basically place this node automatically. And this is what holds your settings for iris. So basically, if, if someone else doesn't have iris, this is able to store um, the data for it. And ironically, you can actually change the, the colors of the iris node as well, if you really want. Um, so you could make it black or you can do whatever you want with it really. Um, and it, it's great to know that the RS node also has a little fac inside it. So if you click on the question mark, it gives you a summary of how the package works. 
It also shows you another feature that I'm going to show you now, which is that you can clone colors much faster. So let's say I've got all these nodes and I want them to match this one here. I just select all of these as a group and I middle click, sorry, and I middle click, click on the color wheel and it pushes those settings to that node. So again, if I just select this node here, middle click, you'll see that it pushes that color. So this is how you can standardize graphics um, throughout your script. I don't think you can control Z. No, you can't control Z these things. Um, so just be mindful that, you know, you will need to work carefully while you use Iris. Um, let's say we want these to be blue instead. You can see that also Iris sort of works with palettes. So if you jump from one color to another and all those colors share a portion of the color wheel, it tries to sort of standardize the color scheme that you're pushing across. Uh, but from there, you can go and change your settings as well. So we can still mix and match but it tries to make assumptions about what you're trying to make your node look like to begin with. Uh, let's just say we want to take this one as well and we want to match. There you go. So you can see just how easy it is to set up the script. Um, and one of the last things to notice about this is notice how the wires are also recolorizing as well. Um, this is great for data flow. So if you want to really show your users where data is going, it's much easier to trace it back to the source with color because you can follow that colored wire much more easily. Um, notice that all the nodes in Iris are ever so slightly transparent. Um, it's a good and a bad thing. I'll sort of run through at the end of the video why it's a bad thing. Um, but the good thing is that you can sort of see your wires behind your nodes, which by default you can't do in Dynamo. It just sits behind them. If you want to change these settings, you just go up here to show settings and you've got the option for nodes to just not override them. Or you can do uniform colors, which at the moment is just all gray or you can do custom. And notice how it remembers the settings that you applied, which is great. And it'd be nice if there was some color profiling options where you can swap between different types of color palettes depending on what type of nodes you're using. Um, but obviously a wish list, it's probably quite hard to implement. It's already quite amazing what um, Eckhart's done as it is. Um, connectors also, you can do uniform, which makes them all one color. In this case, they've chosen to be black. I think maybe, are they colored based on the RS node? No, they just seem to be colored generically, I'm not sure what sets that color. Um, you can do by node, which is what we were using before. And this basically inherits the background color of your node for the wires. And likewise, you can do by node all. And this will also go to nodes that haven't been overridden and inherit the background color of nodes by default. However, you can see that it really washes out the wires, um, which I don't think is ideal. So what we'll just do is go by node instead. Um, so that's pretty much how Iris works. And it has a lot of potential um, to make some really visually appealing scripts that you can navigate through. You'll notice some of my scripts in the future may have some of these features added to them because it's really great at highlighting particular nodes. Let's say I really want to draw emphasis to this node in my script when I'm showing it to you. So I can just take that and I can really quickly reprofile the node. And immediately you can see that this node is special and you can see where the wires are going as well much more quickly. Um, so just expect to see some of that in the future. Uh, but that's the that's the, the package, so pretty neat. Um, but just be aware that the node transparency is locked at 80%. Um, so you may find it undesirable to always have this setting uh, set this way. But what you can do is uninstall Iris and reinstall it whenever you want. Um, and you won't lose your settings as long as you keep that Iris node in your script. Um, it's also important to note that when a node generates a warning, Typically in Dynamo, it would go yellow or orange, I think it is. Um, but now you just see a message. So if I just go back into Iris and I make a code block without a zero in front of a number, see, so yeah, I only see the warning. I don't see that yellow background that really highlights that there's a warning there. So this transparency overrides that. That might be a problem when you're doing troubleshooting. So again, maybe you can just uninstall Iris and then reinstall it when you're ready. Um, and the RS node had to remain in the script. If the, if the RS node's deleted, I believe it takes all the settings with it. Yes, so there you go. And I think even if I control Z, I've lost all my settings. So it's a very fragile node. You have to be really careful not to lose those settings if you rely on them quite a lot. So I can't get those back. Um, but that's pretty much how you can add color to your nodes. So hopefully this helps you uh, visualize your scripts better and maybe it'll help you read my scripts in future in training. Um, any questions or feedback, feel free to let me know. 
Um, I can't really take credit for the package, just wanted to share it. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Uh, lots more to come. And thanks for watching today. Um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.